Hi everyone, I'm TyKevin at E3, and today I'm going to walk you through an innovation in the strategy for testing emulators for accuracy that the TaskBot team has been working on over the last couple months and the last year as we've been building out our archives on runs.tas.bot. This uh, new innovation is the concept of using TASs and console verifications of TASs as a way of testing emulators for accuracy. And this is a blog post I'm going to basically just be reading through for you guys live, uh, reading back on my YouTube and then posting a link to this blog post in the description of the YouTube video. So you guys can go reference it and watch the blog as there's updates to the uh, testing accuracy and results we've gotten as we run these tests, uh, these task tests against emulators. Uh, this is a blog post on GB, it, it, that's Game Boy, task verification as test automation for the Game Boy emulator Gambat speedrun. That's the main one that we use when we're doing console verifications. We are using console verified tasks, again, as a test framework for Game Boy emulation accuracy. Now, to take a step back, traditionally, emulators have been tested via suites of test ROMs, a kind of micro benchmark for specific console behaviors in combination with regression tests for being able to boot up games. Implementations of this can be seen in Dade's GB emulator shootout, where there are huge lists of all the different results with very, very complex test ROMs that the most accurate Game Boy emulators get, and you can actually even look at how Gambat speedrun performs against Dade's GB emulator shootout, for instance. And then you can also look at Same Boy's automation, Same Boy by Liji or Lior, and uh, Same Boy's automation simply make sure that Same Boy can continue booting games as new improvements are made to the accuracy of Same Boy. Uh, this approach with making sure that games boot up and pass test ROMs is generally quite successful in emulator development, but it has slight pitfalls in the context of speedrunning and tasking that I'm going to walk you through he uh, here today. Uh, as tools such as speedruns generally require, I say decently here, but really extremely accurate emulators to maintain proper comparison between newer, faster tasks and the ones that they are beating or obsoleting. Uh, because even further than that, even the TaskBot team and other console verification people, console verification being where we take a task and we take those inputs and we send them to a console where we actually make sure that those console inputs play back exactly the same way as the task was designed in the emulator. And to do that, we need the, the task and the emulator to be perfectly in sync so that they have the exact state of the console replicated at the point of every input in the task. To learn more about this process of console verification and our progress in it, you can visit the TaskBot archive on runs.task.bot, and this link will be available on this blog post, which I'm going to have linked in the description. The TaskBot team frequently runs into issues, though, where tasks that we've previously gotten to work, where we can take the emulator inputs and send them to a console, uh, might stop syncing if we try to take that list of inputs and play it back in a newer version of the emulator. Uh, many systems also aren't really researched enough to have this giant suite of test ROMs like the one used by Dade in the GB emulator shoot, shootout by which to evaluate their accuracy as improvements are made. So what this site is doing is documenting a supplemental approach to test ROMs, effectively using these console verifications of TASs as test ROMs and a testing suite for emulation accuracy. Uh, Game Boy console verification is mainly performed using Extremes' Game Boy interface. Game Boy interface being a improvement to the Game Boy player's firmware startup disk that is heavily used in both the real-time and TAS speedrunning communities. Uh, Game Boy interface can take an input log in a GameCube via the SD card adapter, which you put in the memory card port of the front of the GameCube. And it can take files on there with inputs timestamped relative to how many GBA audio cycles have, or samples is the right word, uh, have passed since the GameCube, or really the Game Boy Player exactly, has powered on. And it'll just be able to send those inputs at the right time from the timestamps in that file. 
Uh, you can find all available input logs of tasks that we've successfully verified for Game Boy and Game Boy Color and Game Boy Advance games on runs.tas.bot. With more info about how to how the dumps are made on uh, the runs.tas.bot site under console guides, GBC, and then a paste bin also that's linked on this page. The Game Boy Player attachment, the GameCube, being also a device used to record RTA speed runs of Game Boy, Game Boy Color, and Game Boy Advance games, it is extremely important for an emulator to be able to accurately portray the behavior of not just a Game Boy or Game Boy Color, like the original Dot Matrix Game Boy, or the game, the brick, the, the big like gray one, or the Game Boy Color, but instead the Game Boy Advance's Game Boy Color mode, because the Game Boy Player is a Game Boy Advance. It has the exact actual hardware of a Game Boy Advance inside of it. Uh, and the main difference between the Game Boy Advance's Game Boy Color and the original Game Boy Color is a BIOS change in the boot up BIOS of the Game Boy Advance Game Boy Color. Uh, this Game Boy Advance Game Boy Color mode was recently detailed, actually, in a video from Mon Modern Vintage Gamer. So the point of all this is that the exact hardware revisions of consoles are very, very important, not only for tassers to maintain accuracy as newer uh, improvements and documentation of behavior is made on consoles. You want to make sure everybody's talking about the exact same console so, and that they're all developing emulators about the specific hardware revisions they care about. And then also in RTA speedruns, you want to be able to make fair comparison between all the people in an RTA speedrunning community. So if a behavior is happening for most people on the Game Boy Player when they're playing an RTA, you want to make sure that people playing on emulator experience those exact same behaviors and timings. Uh, so you get that proper comparison for records. Um, now, below here, what we've done to kind of demonstrate how this automation of console verifications works is there's images here of the current state of the latest changes to Gambat Speedrun. Gambat Speedrun being the Game Boy and Game Boy Color tasking emulator that we're talking about. We're taking the latest changes to that emulator and we're feeding back in known verified inputs of TASs. So you can see, for example, here, this is the kill screen of Donkey Kong 94 here, or you can see the kill screen of the uh, Battletoads Game Boy game here, and all sorts of other final boss kill screens, except for a few that aren't currently passing, and we'll talk about those, like the Hammer and Harry game here. So Gambat Speedrun is currently passing 41 out of 46 verified TASs from this list here below. And the main difference, the reason that some of these tasks don't pass is mostly because some of them are made in a different emulator called GBHawk. And because we've been able to verify the inputs from that different emulator uh, GBHawk on console, we can then pipe those inputs back into Gambat Speedrun and see if they work there as well. But they don't. So we know there might be something to improve then in the Gambat Speedrun core that we could maybe glean from GB Hawk's implementation of the whatever behaviors are causing those differences. Um, and we can see here, yes, 41 of the 46 known console verifications. We're up to 46 console verifications at the time of this video, successful on Game Boy and Game Boy Color games. There's actually been even more different categories, but that's just the total number of individual unique games that have had verifications. Uh, 41 out of the 46 here have uh, passing status, and 36 out of those 41 are using this sort of new philosophy, using the uh, GBI timestamps, the console verified version of the task, and feeding that back into the emulator to make sure that nothing changes as it progresses. There's also five of them that have a little bit more data that we can't pack all the way into the GBI input timestamps. Things like the real-time clocks uh, offset that is actually determined per cartridge. Uh, there's a lot of complexity there in Pokemon Crystal that isn't entirely baked into the GBI timestamps. 
And so that's something that we needed to express by testing against the full BizHawk BK2. And we also here have a couple issues like uh, this great game, Winnie the Pooh and the Hundred Acre Wood down here, uh, where that one's not working. We don't know why, apart from maybe that Game Bad Speedrun might be playing too long before sending the inputs to the console, uh, the emulated version of the console. So, but this philosophy overall allows us to see those problems with our emulator and look for points where we can make progress in accuracy. Um, there's some other great kill screens here in the, in the uh, uh, images. You can see like the kill screen from SpongeBob, The Legend of the Lost Spatula, where Krabs is rolling around in money. <laughs> And uh, Emperor's New Groove, Oracle of Ages. Now, there is there is some other like quirks of this philosophy, right? If we're using image output after a certain point after the last input, you can get some random quirks like Oracle of Seasons where there's literally nothing to screenshot because the credits are pure white at this point after the inputs uh, are played here. And uh, TCG where there's like this small slither that you have to use to tell that it passed here. But you can see a bunch of others like Mega Man Extreme 2 and Mega Man Extreme, where these are the final credits of those games, respectively. Uh, Link's Awakening DX also hitting some of the final screens there. So a whole bunch of working ones. But now, because we have this automation, we can see where tasks that have been known to be verified have either had their behavior changed as the emulator progressed, or uh, maybe there's a behavior in a different emulator where that dump was made from that we can then identify, okay, let's look at this game to make work next and uh, improve the emulator using that strategy. Um, so yeah, just wanted to walk you through you guys through here, this new innovation, the concept of using uh, the task bot team and other console verifiers uh, dumps of tasks as a way of feeding back tests into emulators and making emulators even more and more accurate for tasters and RTA speedrunners. So thank you for watching today. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I will make sure to link all of this great information in the description of this video.